We're now going to derive the standard form of an ellipse. And what's really, really important here is to recognize that we're just defining this to be the major axis, but it doesn't have to be. This derivation works the other way as well. So we're going to put our center at 0, 0. Our vertices are going to be at plus or minus a0, a0 minus a0, and the vertices is the end of the graph along the major axis. And the foci we're going to put at plus or minus c0. And notice that c is inside of a. So now that we've set all this up, we create a new point p, and we get the equation, the distance from p to f1 plus the distance from p to f2 is equal to 2a. Well, that gives us the square root of x minus a minus c squared plus y squared plus the square root of x minus c squared plus y squared is equal to 2a. We're going to make this a plus c rather than a minus a minus. That's just easier. And we're going to subtract this second one over to the other side. So now that it's on the other side, we get the square root of x plus c squared plus y squared equals 2a minus the square root of x minus c squared plus y squared. All right. Now we're ready to square both sides, just like we were solving an equation. This gives us x plus c squared plus y squared equals 2a minus the square root of x minus c squared plus y squared squared. We're going to use the perfect square trinomial twice. So this gives us x squared plus 2cx plus x squared plus y squared equals 4a squared, square the first term, minus 2 times the first term times the second term is 4a square roots of x minus c squared plus y squared plus the square root of x minus c squared plus y squared squared, which just means that the square and the square root go away. So now I'm going to use my perfect square trinomial here to get x squared plus 2cx plus, that should be a c squared, not an x squared, c squared plus y squared equals 4a squared minus 4a times x minus c squared plus y squared underneath the square root plus x squared minus 2cx plus c squared plus y squared. Now, when we subtract everything over, notice that the only things that don't go away is the minus 4a squared and the 2cx's, which combine to 4cx minus 4a squared equals minus 4a times that square root. Let's divide everything by 4, since that we see a 4 everywhere. This gives us cx minus a squared equals a times the square root of x minus, minus a. We're keeping the minus over there. c plus y squared. Now we square both sides, which gives us cx minus a squared squared equals, a, when I square a negative, it goes away. I square the a, that gives me an a squared. And a square root of x minus c squared plus y squared squared. So the square root goes away. And we're just left with this. Let's do our perfect square trinomial. This gives me c, c squared x squared minus 2 a squared cx plus a to the fourth equals a squared times x squared minus 2cx plus c squared plus y squared. We can distribute that a squared through. So now we get c squared x squared minus 2a squared cx plus a to the fourth equals a squared x squared minus 2a squared cx plus a squared c squared plus a squared y squared. 
So what we want to do is notice what happens. I have the same thing on both sides. So that and that will go away when I add over. And so I'm going to move everything with an X or a Y to the left and everything without it to the right. So we're going to subtract A to the fourth. We're going to subtract A squared, X squared, and A squared, Y squared. And that's going to give us, need a little bit more room, C squared, X squared, minus A squared, X squared, minus A squared, Y squared, equals A squared, C squared, minus A to the fourth. Well, let's look at this term right here, and then let's factor out an X squared. So we get X squared times C squared minus A squared, minus a squared y squared equals, let's pull an a squared out of this, a squared c squared minus a squared. I don't quite like this minus being here and all these going on, so let's actually change, let's multiply everything by a negative 1, and we're going to put that negative 1 here inside, so we're going to get minus x squared, c squared minus a squared, plus a squared, y squared, equals a minus a squared, c squared minus a squared. We're going to now move this negative into here, so it changes both signs. This becomes a squared minus c squared, plus a squared, y squared, equals a squared times a squared minus c squared. Well, we're almost ready to go. What, we're, what we have to do now is to take advantage of the a triangle inequality, which says if I have a triangle, notice we have a triangle being formed here, if you look at the image, this triangle right here between F1, P, and F2, then it says that the distances of two sides, D of P to F1 plus D, P to F2, will always be bigger than D between F1, F2. And so we know that 2A is already equal to this, and we know that the distance between F1 and F2 is 2C, because it's C to one side, C to the other, so we know 2A is bigger than 2C, which says that A is bigger than C when we divide by 2, and if I square both sides, then A squared is bigger than C squared, or a squared minus c squared is bigger than zero. And since if this is true, then we let b then we can let b squared equal a squared minus c squared. And we can replace wherever we see an a squared minus b, c squared, we can replace with a b squared. So this turns into x squared b squared x squared plus a squared y squared equals a squared b squared. Now here's the part that you need to know. After I divide everything by a squared, b squared, I get the formula that x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. Here's the standard form. It's a lot of work to get there. You're not going to have to repeat that. I just want you to have seen it once.